Hello everyone, my name is Chad Kroll, and today we're going to be installing Kubernetes version 1.33. We have a couple of bare instances here, just a couple of cloud servers. In my case, I'm using Linodes, but this will work on any uh, cloud provider. And we're just um, spinning up a bare Ubuntu 22.04 instance, and we're going to be installing the containerd runtime, the kubeadm, kubelet, and uh, kubectl to install our Kubernetes cluster, uh, bootstrap our cluster, we should say. This goes along with the course, uh, the container security course on kubeskills. So if you go to kubeskills.com slash courses, you'll see the container security course, uh, which is a part of uh, getting to know more about Kubernetes and how to deploy an app to Kubernetes using GitLab CICD. So let's get right into it. Let's install container D. So we'll update our packages, and install container D via the apt package manager. And we'll do this on both our control plane, which is the screen on the top, and then our worker node, which is on the bottom. And I should mention that these commands will be listed in the link below. Uh, it's a GitLab repo that goes along with the course that I mentioned before. And let's clear the screen. And now we'll make a directory for the container D configuration. And we'll uh, create a configuration from the default config, so container D config default, uh, but we'll change a few things in here. So we're going to change the system D C group to match that of the, um, the C group that Kubelet uses. So we have to have those match. And then the uh, sandbox image. So this is the pause container that's used to uh, reserve the uh, Linux network namespace for Kubernetes namespaces. And then we'll um, create that all in a file called config.toml in that directory that we just created at etcd slash container D. And we'll do that for both nodes. And to have that apply, we'll do a systemctl restart container D. And another thing we'll do is we'll turn swap off uh, because we want to use true memory and instead of using um, RAM from disk because that is um, not re recommended by Kubernetes. And so, so now that we've uh, installed container D, we can move on to installing Kubelet, kubeadm, and kubectl. So now we'll update our packages once more and clear the screen. And we'll install these packages on our Ubuntu machine to make sure that we can pull down the Kubernetes packages from those external HTTPS uh, repositories. And now we'll create a secure repository or a secure directory for our GPG keys. Uh, this is advised to keep them separate from the system-wide GPG keys. So we'll make that directory. And then we'll download the, those GPG keys for packages um, related to Kubernetes 1.33. And now let's add those to our packages locally. And now we can update those packages and pull those packages down securely so that we can install them. I'm just going to set an environment variable so that I don't have to type the 1.33.2 slash 1.1 over and over again um, for those three packages that we're about to install. If you are wanting a different uh, Kubernetes version, you can also you can always go to the uh, apt cache and see which, ver which versions are available. And so you could do this for kubelet, kubeadm, and kubectl, which is the packages we're about to install. So now we can install kubelet, kubeadm, and kubectl via, via our apt package manager. And we can uh, pass in that kube version variable to install that specific version. And we'll do that on both of the Kubernetes nodes. And finally, we can mark those at that version so they don't uh, automatically update or change in any way with the uh, aftermark hold command. So now those are pinned to 1.33. So next, we're going to enable packet forwarding on the uh, Kubernetes node. This is essential for pod-to-pod uh, -pod communication, especially from pod-to-pod -pod as they exist on different nodes. And this allows us to work better with our CNI as well, our container network interface. And in order for this to take effect after reboot, we'll just add that to our sysctl.conf file. And without having to actually reboot the system, we'll go ahead and apply that immediately. OK, so this command, let me clear the screen. 
So this command is going to be run only on the control plane. So do not run this command on the worker node below. And that command is the sudo kubeadm init command. We're giving it the pod network cider of 192.168.0.0/16. So these are going to be reserved for our pods. Uh, please make sure that this is this doesn't conflict potentially with your Kubernetes node, uh, but this this shouldn't conflict with mine, being that mine's 172, so 192 should be fine. And then we're going to specify the uh, socket to use, the Unix socket. Uh, in this case, we're going to make sure that we're telling Kubernetes to use container D as the container runtime, and so we can specify where that uh, container D socket is. So let's run this only on the control plane. OK, that took about 20 seconds for me. And if you notice the output here, we have a couple of commands to run. If you want to run your kubectl commands uh, using a regular user as opposed to root user. And so we can copy this whole thing and paste that into the terminal, again, only on the control plane. And then we're going to take this line here, starting with kubeadm join. And this is how we join our worker node to the cluster. So now if we run kubectl get nodes, we'll see we only have one node joined to the cluster. Uh, we're going to run that kubeadm join command on our worker node down below here. So let's clear the screen and run that with sudo if you're a regular user. kubeadm join, and then that contains the token that's going to join the worker node to the cluster. And now, going back to our control plane, if we do kubectl get nodes again, we'll see we have two nodes, one a control plane and one a worker node. You may have noticed that the status is not ready, so let's go ahead and change that. That means that the CNI has not been applied yet. So let's go ahead and use the Calico CNI. We can run the command kubectl apply, just as we would any other YAML file in our cluster and then give it the path to the calico.yaml uh, so we can start up our calico pods. So once we run this, we can do kubectl in the kube system namespace, get pods, and we can watch those calico pods, as you see them at the top there, coming up and hopefully get to getting to a running status. And then you'll see the accordion s pods come up um, as well. And now that we have a CNI installed, we can do kubectl get nodes again. And we'll see that both of our nodes are in a status of ready. And we can continue to use our Kubernetes cluster. So we have successfully bootstrapped a Kubernetes cluster. So congratulations on that. Now we can continue to run our pods or run any, run any um, of our workloads on Kubernetes. So let's say we wanted to kubectl run nginx, image nginx, and kubectl get pods. You can always alias k to kubectl to make it shorter, k get pods. And now we have our first pod running on our brand new Kubernetes cluster. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in uh, going beyond this and maybe deploying an application using GitLab CI CD to your Kubernetes cluster, please follow the container security course, uh, which we go over lots of uh, different methods to secure a cluster and uh, be able to uh, automate that through GitLab CI CD. Uh, see the link below for that, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.